Welcome to part three of the series on making a mantle, fireplace mantle. Uh, in the last episode, you saw us making the form, bending form, for uh, uh, the front of the mantle. And now we're going to actually make the laminates, the bent laminates. And to do that, we're going to use bendable plywood. This stuff is really wild. This is a piece of plywood, and it's very, very flexible. We're going to cut two layers of this, laminate it up to make a bent lamination with a 22 and 3 quarter inch inside radius. Okay, here's a couple of layers of bendable plywood. You can see how easy this stuff bends. What we want it to do is hold its shape, and also we want to be able to smooth out the rough surface that bendable plywood normally has. So we're going to sandwich these two layers with a, a filling of oak veneer with its grain running perpendicular to the grain of the bendable plywood. So the oak veneer grain will run like this, the bendable plywood grain runs like this. And what I, that'll do is that'll stiffen up the laminate uh, once we glue all the parts together. We'll also put an oak veneer face on the front and back of the sandwich so that there'll be three layers of oak veneer and two layers of bendable plywood. We'll put that into our form, onto our form, into the vacuum bag, bag it up, and when the glue sets, uh, the laminate will hold its shape, and that is what we will then veneer with the finished veneer. So let's go ahead and start cutting up the bendable, or cut, cutting up the veneer. To do that, I'm using a veneer saw, which is uh, just a special saw. It's got teeth that are triangular shaped like little knives. And I've got a, a, a cutting board I put down here. I made a mark where I want to cut the veneer. And I'm going to line up my straight edge, which is just a piece of scrap plywood on here. And then I'll just pull the saw towards me. And we just broke off a little bit of the veneer there. Got to be careful not to do that. So I can actually push the saw as well. Okay. And so we've just broken off some waste here, and we now have a clean edge. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and cut our lengths. We'll go ahead and slice off the waste, and I'll have to tape together some pieces to make it the full width of the 12-inch uh, blanks here, and we'll be all set. And to make the veneer layers the right width, which have to be 12 inches, the veneer I'm starting with is only 11 inches, so I've got to match up some joints, and that's why I'm cutting lengthwise, so I can get pieces that I can then tape up to the correct width. Slice the veneer to the right widths. Now I'm going to tape the pieces together to form 12 inch wide uh, sheets of veneer. Remember I started out with veneer sheets that were roughly 11 inches wide. I need 12 so I had to, had to, to do this tape up. What I'm using is veneer tape. I'm using the thin kind that is perforated uh, so it doesn't make much difference in thickness of the veneer it allows glue to penetrate. Here's one of the sheets I've already glued up. You can see it's, for those of you who've done veneering before, this is an abbreviated uh, tape up. Normally you'd have cross pieces here and you'd be very careful to make sure this joint is, is perfect. But in this case, we're talking of structural pieces that are going to be sandwiched inside bendable plywood. 
We're not worried about perfect joints, but we do want the tape to hold the sheet together to make it easy when we do the glue up. So I've got two pieces of uh, veneer matched up here. I'll take my little stamp licking pad, wet the veneer strip, and I'm going to put a strip at each end to help hold this together while I'm doing the main glue up. Okay, and then I cut some lengths of the tape to 37 inches, which is how long I'm making these sheets. Now I'm just going to go ahead and wet this. I'm going to be gentle because this tape is very thin, it's very fragile. It just barely holds the veneer together. I'll just use a regular clothes iron to uh, dry the tape and it also helps the tape shrink up a little bit which uh, makes the joint a little bit tighter. I've got the iron just set on a medium, medium high heat. Two sheets made up now that can be the inside of the sandwich. In order to glue up the structural laminate, I'm going to use a glue called Unibond 800. It's a two-part glue. You mix powder in a bag with resin, and I, I do usually do about 10 to 1 by weight. I've got a little scale here. And uh, this glue is particularly good for bent laminations because it has very little creep. Uh, by that I mean, if you use a typical plastic resin glue, uh, the glue is uh, plastic. It has a, a small amount of uh, creep that, uh, where it can actually uh, slide. Uh, the surfaces can slide slightly. Now I'm not talking about anything that would be, it would be very noticeable, but with a bent lamination, the lamination is under uh, pressure, or excuse me, it's under tension all the time, and so uh, you really don't want uh, the surfaces to, uh, you want the surfaces to be locked together, and that's what maintains the shape of the, of the curve. So um, I use a glue that has no creep. This uh, particular Unibond 800, when it dries, it's like peanut brittle, and uh, it, uh, it's just very stiff. Now, this particular glue uh, you have to use with plenty of ventilation. So I have a big window fan running uh, just over to my right and a big open window to my left so that I've got a flow of air across here all the time and uh, that way I'm not breathing uh, any of these vapors. Although it's not a particularly vaporous glue, um, it's still a precaution if you use it to have plenty of ventilation. So I'm just going to go ahead and stir up my mixture here and then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and, and slake, just like you do with concrete, to allow the powder to uh, fully dissolve in the resin. And you've got to, uh, you've got to get this uh, glue job done fairly quickly with this stuff. I think it has uh, an open time. They tell you to use, uh, use only as much as you can do in an hour. 
Uh, uh, so uh, you got to work kind of quickly. Apply the glue. I'm using a regular notch spreader. This is a Hyde 19120. Uh, got very small notches in it. Allows you to get a pretty decent uh, layer of glue on here. Okay, now I just lay the sheet of veneer on there. And then sandwich it. Nice all nice and even. Okay, and now I'm ready to do one of these sides. I may have to mix up a little more of this cement too, that's fine. I guess that I would need 300 grams. Everything made up here. Now I'm just going to line this up with my marks. They're nice and centered. Put a little tape on here to help keep it from sliding on me. Carefully put this into the bag. And carefully slide the whole thing on in onto my platen. Make sure my mesh is nice and centered. I wanted to give you a close-up of the vacuum pump. This is one that I made with parts that I got from uh, veneersupplies.com. Uh, another name for the website is joewoodworker.com. He sells the parts plus directions on how to make this. All you need is a compressor. You can hook it up. And uh, right now I've got about uh, a little over 25 inches of vacuum. Now I can get a little bit more if I need to, but that's, that's plenty good. And then I've got the bag here. Uh, I, while you weren't looking, I took the mesh, the nylon mesh, out of the bag because I saw that I put on so much glue that it was bleeding through the, the oak and uh, the nylon mesh would have stuck to the glue. I would have had a big mess. Uh, so I took the mesh out and now the, the polyethylene bag is up against the oak and uh, 
the glue won't stick to the polyethylene bag. Any little bit that ends up there, I just peel right off it. It's no problem, and so I'll get a nice smooth surface. But uh, we'll we'll let this sit uh, overnight. Uh, the Unibond 800 dry or cures at different rates depending on the temperature. But uh, it's late in the afternoon now, so we're just going to let this sit under vacuum all night, and we'll have a nice uh, a nice laminate substrate on which we can veneer. Let's take the uh, glued up form now out of the bag, off the press, or off the, uh, the form, and see what it looks like. go. Doesn't wiggle very easily now. It's pretty much glued in place by the, uh, the layers of veneer and the fact that they're glued onto the bendable plywood in place makes for a very solid piece on which we can then put the finished veneer. You might notice that there's a little bit of gap between the form and the finished laminate. That's called spring back. There's always a little bit, so it's just something you have to account for in the design. It's usually not very severe. And I also wanted to show you what this uh, Unibond 800 glue looks like when it's finally dry. This is the container I used to mix it up. and. doesn't stick to the plastic, but it makes a very brittle glue. And that way it doesn't creep. It's very brittle and stiff. Okay, so in the next episode we're going to go ahead and veneer this with the finished veneer, and we'll see you then.